Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering the second part of Chapter 12, Sections 12-3, 12-4, and 12-5. First, 12-3, RNA and Protein Synthesis. So genes are encoded DNA instructions that control the production of proteins within the cell. And to do this, to, pro uh, the, to produce proteins within the cell, DNA has to send out the coded instructions on RNA. So the structure of RNA. RNA, like DNA, consists of a long chain of nucleotides. However, the sugar in RNA is ribose instead of deoxyribose, and RNA is generally single-stranded, and it contains uracil in the place of thymine. So it's a disposable copy of a segment of DNA. So there are uh, different types of RNA, and uh, they're all involved in one job, protein th synthesis, which is the assembly of amino acids into proteins, and it's controlled by RNA. So the three main types of RNA, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. So the RNA molecules that carry the copies of instructions for assembling amino acids into proteins are known as messenger RNA. And the ribosomes that are made up of several dozen proteins, as well as a form of RNA, are known as uh, ribosomal RNA. And then transfer RNA moves each amino acid to the ribosome as it is specified by a coded message in RNA, M messenger RNA. Okay, transcription. So transcription is copying part of the nucleotide sequence of DNA into a complementary sequence in RNA. And this requires an enzyme known as RNA polymerase. During transcription, RNA polymerase binds to DNA and separates the DNA strands. RNA then uses one strand of DNA as a template from which nucleotides are assembled into a strand of RNA. RNA polymerase will only bind to regions of DNA known as promoters, which have specific base sequences. Promoters are signals in the DNA that indicate to the enzyme where to bind to make RNA. Okay, RNA editing. So RNA molecules require a bit of editing before they're ready to go into action. DNA molecules contain sequences of nucleotides that are not involved in protein synthesis, and these are called introns. And the DNA sequences that do synthesize for proteins are called exons. So when the RNA uh, strand is synthesized, the introns have to be cut out of the RNA molecule, and the exons have to be spliced back together. Okay, next we have the genetic code. So proteins are made by joining amino acids into long chains called polypeptides. And the language of the mRNA instructions to make the amino acids is called the genetic code. And there are only four letters, A, U, C, and G, which are the four nitrogenous bases of RNA. So the genetic code is read three letters at a time, and each three-letter word is called a codon. And there are 64 possible three-base codons. So the code AUG codes for methanine, the start codon. That starts the protein synthesis. So here we can see a chart of we can see a chart of the uh, genetic code, and each letter, uh, each combination corresponds to a uh, protein, and you can see that there are a lot of um, combinations that code to the same protein, and that's part of the, uh, it's almost a defense mechanism against mutations. Okay, next we have translation. So mRNA serves as instructions, and they, however, they need ribosomes to assemble the amino acids. Translation is the decoding of an mRNA message into a polypeptide chain, or a protein. During translation, the cell uses information from messenger RNA to produce these proteins, and there are four steps. So the first step, before translation even occurs, messenger RNA is transcribed from DNA in the nucleus and released from the DNA in the nucleus and, and, re and released into the cytoplasm. So translation begins when a messenger RNA molecule in the cytoplasm attaches to a ribosome. As each codon moves through the ribosome, the proper amino acid is brought into the ribosome by uh, transfer RNA. The amino acid is then transferred onto the peptide chain. Each transfer molecule transfer RNA molecule carries only one kind of amino acid, and each transfer uh, RNA molecule has three unpaired bases, called the anticodon, and these are complementary to only one messenger RNA codon. Next, we have the ribosome. The ribosome forms a peptide bond between the first and second and, uh, amino acids. It then breaks the bond that held the first transfer RNA molecule to its amino acid and releases the uh, transfer molecule, and then uh, moves to the third codon. The uh, polypeptide chain continues to grow until the ribosome reaches a stop codon on the messenger RNA molecule. When a stop codon is reached, the polypeptide chain is released. Okay, then we have the rules of RNA and DNA. The roles, excuse me, the roles of RNA and DNA. 
So the cell uses the vital DNA master plan to prepare the RNA blueprint. So it's the uh, RNA is a copy of DNA that is then sent out to the organelles to produce or to uh, complete their tasks. All right, genes and proteins. So proteins are enzymes which catalyze and regulate chemical reactions. The genes for certain proteins can regulate the right regulate the rate and pattern of growth throughout an organism. The proteins are microscopic uh, tools, each specifically tools, each specifically designed to build or operate a component of a living cell. Okay, section 12-4, mutations. So mutations are mistakes in the copying of DNA, inserting, uh, for example, inserting an incorrect base or even skipping a base. So there are different kinds of mutations. Uh, gene mutations, which include uh, point mutation, which is when the a mutation involving changes in one or a few nucleotides. And this occurs at a single point in a DNA sequence, and it includes substitutions, insertions, and deletions. And um, then there's the frame shift mutations, and that's when the codon grouping is shifted for every codon that follows. So when um, here we can see to the right, we can see a deletion when a G, uh, a nitrogenous base for, for guanine is deleted, we end up with uh, three U's instead of a G and then two U's. Here we have a substitution. We have um, the guanine is uh, accidentally transcribed as an adenine. And then we have an insertion where there's an uh, A added. And all of these change the protein. However, there are many mutations that don't change the protein. Okay, then we have chromosomal mutations. So these involve changes in the number or structure of chromosomes and may even change the number of copies of some genes. So these are deletions, which is the loss of all or part of a chromosome, duplications, which produce extra copies or parts of a chromosome, inversions, which reverse the direction of parts or chromosomes, and translocations. And that's when one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another. So the significance of mutations. Most mutations are neutral, little to no effect. However, there are mutations that can cause dramatic changes in protein structure or gene activity, and these are often harm harmful, producing defect a defective protein that disrupts normal biological activities and may result in genetic disorders. So harmful mutations may cause cancer, and plant and animal breeders will actually often take advantage of beneficial mutations. So for plants, there's a... Uh, when a plant is a polyploidy, it has an extra set of chromosomes, and polyploidy plants are often larger and stronger, so most of the time breeders who have uh, polyploidy plants will try to uh, breed them to produce more of those for larger uh, plants. Okay, 12-5, gene regulation. So only a fraction of the genes in a cell are expressed at any given time. The DNA sequence of a gene appears to be nothing more than a confusing jumble of the four letters and that represent bases in DNA. However, if analyzed patterns emerge, DNA sequences serve as promoters, stop, start, and stop codons. The regular, regulatory sites next to the promoters are places where other proteins uh, can bind directly to the DNA sequences at those sites, and this can regulate transcription. So now an example of gene regulation. So E. coli is a 4,280 has 4,288 protein encoding genes, and a group of the a group of genes that operate together is known as an operon. So in E. coli, there's a lac operon. So this must be expressed in order for the bacterium to be able to use the sugar lactose as a food. And to use lactose as a food, the bacterium must take lactose across its cell membrane and then break the bond between glucose and galactose. And these tasks are performed by proteins coded for by the genes of the uh, lac operon. So these lac genes can be turned on and off. So they're turned off by the repressors when there is no lactose in its environment and turned back on in the presence of lactose. So without these uh, repressors, <clears throat> the uh, bacterium would be constantly trying to search for lactose and or running the process to make uh, food out of lactose, using up all of its energy when it's unable to uh, make the lactose. Okay, then we have eukaryotic gene regulation. Most eukaryotic genes are controlled individually and have regulatory sequences that are much more complex than those of the lac operon genes. The genes are regulated in a variety of ways by enhancer sequences located before the point at which transcription begins. Next, development and differentiation. Each of the specialized, specialized cells cell types found in the adult develops from the same fertilized egg. 
This means that cells don't just grow and divide during embryonic development. They also undergo differentiation, meaning they become specialized in structure and function. A series of genes, known as the Hox genes, control the differ differentiation of cell tish cells and tissues in the embryo. And then a mutation in one of these master control genes can completely change the organs that develop in specific, specific parts of the body. The key concepts. List the conclusions that Griffith, Avery, Hershey, and Chase drew from their experiments. Describe Watson and Crick's model of the DNA molecule. Explain how DNA is replicated. List the three main types of RNA. What happens during transcription? What happens during translation? What is a mutation? How is the LAC operon operated? How is it turned on and off? And then describe how most eukaryotic genes are controlled. Alright, that's actually it for chapter 12. Okay, we just forgot the key concepts for chapter 12. So the key concepts. List the conclusions that Griffith, Avery, Hershey, and Chase drew from their experiments. Describe Watson and Crick's model of the DNA molecule. Explain how DNA is replicated. List the three main types of RNA. What happens during transcription? What happens during translation? What is a mutation? How is the LAC operon operated? How is it turned on and off? And then describe how most eukaryotic genes are controlled.